five must have paints. Uh, recently, I was chatting to uh, the social media manager of Redgrass Games. He mentioned, just as a fun article, what the five must have paints that you have in your collection. It got, got me thinking. I didn't want to answer in too much of a linear fashion, uh, and it surprised me when I jotted down uh, exactly what keeps occurring in my work, what turned out to be the top five. So here it is, my top five indispensable paints. Okay, in no discernible order, the first one, Incubi Darkness, and it'll come as no surprise to students uh, that this makes the lists, and it sits probably at, at its summit. Um, it does everything. If you're painting black, it highlights black. If you're painting white, it shades white. If you're painting skin tones, they make skin tones look great. Uh, when I have colours on my palette, uh, so when I'm working through uh, uh, colour theory with students, um, in order to make this colour, it's a desaturated turquoise. So you take turquoise, you add black to it. I inevitably make this colour in any custom blend that I create anyway. Uh, hell, it it goes in absolutely everything. It paints skin tones, shading, and highlighting. Unbelievably so. Yes, uh, if you add white to it, right at the very apex of the highlight, it does uh, work. Uh, develop tonal interest in black armor, shade red robes, cast uh, create great cast shadows on sand dunes. Uh, it's the ultimate Swiss Army knife color. We can see here uh, the extensive use of it. So the armor was highlighted, or rather uh, pigmented with Inkeby Darkness. The face was shaded, and I used a light green white at the very top. Uh, the cloak includes portions of it. Uh, I think the only portions of it that don't include Inkeby Darkness are the fire embers on the base. Okay, number two, Lamp Black from De La Rami Artist Grade Oil Paint. And you can substitute the uh, actual manufacturer for whatever one you like, uh, Dale Rowney, Windsor Newton, as long as it's artist grade, as long as it's the expensive bottles, you're on safe ground. Uh, but black, uh, it's one of those controversial subjects. Is black a colour to begin with? Is zero a number? But with black, it's often seen as uh, an aversion that you shouldn't include black in your work because it deadens tones, it kills colour. And we want our work to be colourful. It will destroy our work, but no. Black is fantastic for adding contrast to colour. It can desaturate it, lower its value, or create rich browns to add to, uh, when you add it to red or purple. But in this instance, I'm choosing it because of the amount of recess shading or pin washing that I do in my work. Uh, I'm a commission artist, so a lot of my work does concern itself with high quality speed painting. And pin washing allows me to put those black lines, those dark lines, back into the miniature without completely blowing out the contrast of the piece. And oils, they're so just user-friendly. All you'll need, artist-grade paint and some Sansador thinner. And away you go. Uh, a lot more forgiving than acrylic paint. Uh, if you do want a, a gentle introduction into this, uh, may I suggest how to use oils in the Titanicus tutorial course for your indulgence. Indeed, most of the tutorials that I do include some manner of pin wash or some manner of oil work. And if you're new to this subject, get in touch. Uh, I'm more than happy to guide you through it. Okay, number three, Medea Com Art Opaque White. Except no substitutes when you are airbrushing white. I am a big proponent of pre-shading your miniatures. In fact, in a perfect world, I suggest that everyone learn how to paint miniatures with an airbrush first, uh, developing their sense of volumes and values before even you even touch a brush. But there you go, that's not the world we live in. Uh, if you're still reading, and you, or if you're still listening and you haven't stormed off in a huff, uh, then do yourself a huge favour and pick this colour up. Uh, it's not the easiest to find, as I understand, in North America, uh, but you can find it in the UK at airbrushes.com. If you live elsewhere and have found a good supplier, please let me know and I will update the list. Light colours are notoriously difficult to run through an airbrush. They induce clogs and they just give you a bad time. White ink has become the norm but I can't stand that stuff. 
Uh, it's finicky in the extreme, creates an odd satin finish, and it doesn't really give a nice solid basis to start building your work on top of. It just bleaches all the colour out that you put on top. But it is user friendly. It's not good if you want... Well, in my, for me, I haven't found much success with it. But once you've pre-shaded miniatures with this paint, there is simply no going back. And it is only to be used as an airbrush paint. It's no good as a regular paint. But, thankfully, Scale 75 Artist range, we have Chimera White, we have Heavy Body Pigment Whites. Um, the Vallejo White's pretty good. Sk um, uh, even Games Workshops, I know it clogs quite a bit. Uh, Scale 75, there are good white alternatives just to have in your colour range to put on your wet palette. But for airbrushing... This is the one. Just accept no subs. Number four. Chimera. What the hell are these Chimera paints? Well, Chimera are, as the bottle suggests, pure pigment acrylics. So they are acrylics with a lot of, of, of a pigment density to them. They are very rich, very vibrant, and Chimera have the ethos of providing you with a basic set of colours and encouraging you to do mixing and matching. If you're not into mixing and matching, if you come from like a Horus Heresy background and you're more into that procedural manner of painting where you have a recipe and you stick to it, well that's fine too. This can enrich your work as well because you'll inevitably be painting cloaks. You'll inevitably be painting skin tones. There will be something with red or purple or violet that will be enriched with this colour. Uh, this, this is very much for the purist. Um, and magenta, it forms one of those updated colour primaries in the CMYK, CMYK colour model. Cyan, magenta, yellow. So you get yourself a good cyan, magenta, yellow. And you can mix these in with other paints. And it just opens up a whole new world of possibilities for you. Why not try mixing this with your favourite red? How about glazing it around the cheeks of your miniature in order to draw out some colour nuance? Or just use it over a pre-shaded robe for a luxuriously deep colour. These do require a little bit of patience to get used to, but they do offer an unparalleled depth of tone. And finally, number five, and this was the head scratcher. I had a few colours jostling for position in here, but finally, uh, it's my flavour of the month, the USMC Tank Crew Light. And it's very important you get the light by Vallejo model colour under the Panzer Aces range. Uh, and this is very much a new addition to my roster, and ousts my very much beloved Hull Red, also from Vallejo. I have had great success with this colour. Uh, highlighting my Sons of Horus, creating atmospheric lighting, and painting skin tones, bizarrely enough. In order to generate atmospheric paint jobs, it is well worth thinking about the shadows and unifying them. So no matter which colour that you're painting, have the same shadow, a dark violet, a dark blue, for example, and the same with the highlight. You can see a couple of examples below. How... oh, it's not coming up. Open image in a new tab. With this guy, all the highlighted areas have been made with the USMC uh, Tank Crew Light. Every single one, from the skin tone to the armor mark uh, to the leather. Uh, you could even do some really weird things like highlighting red with it. Uh, and that's what creates that sort of like bleached out, desaturated red that you want to incorporate in the Horse Heresy because it's of that style. Realistic desaturated, grubby, horrible, bald men hacking at each other with forbidden weapons. Uh, and this colour can uh, help unify a paint scheme. Uh, so the, uh, the Cursed City paint jobs uh, and the tutorials for them, they all use the USMC tank crew to highlight each aspect of the miniature, from armour plate to skin tones. This unifies the scheme and provides a coherent colour palette for your collection. So that is it, my top five. You've seen mine, now show me yours. Comment in the video below what your top five are. What top five colours can you do without? And if you're interested in developing your sense of colour theory, your miniature painting, and you just want to live on the wild side, well, I warmly invite you to the miniature painting courses uh, delivered via Patreon. If you go to littlelegendstudio.com, you'll find links everywhere or if you want to get in touch and talk through your options i'm more than happy to take you through them 
December is an excellent place to sign up because every year we do an advent calendar and this year is no exception. 25 days, 25 treats for all patrons. Thank you very much guys, I hope you enjoyed that video and I will catch you in the next one. Postscript, we've hit 2,000 followers on YouTube. Woo! Yes, we've done it. Uh, it feels like it's taken forever, but we finally hit that 2K mark. Uh, we've hit it a little bit sooner than I was anticipating, and I am working on a giveaway. But I don't want to step on any toes. But it's rather special, and it should be revealed in December 2021. So keep your eyes peeled, keep spreading the love, keep spreading the uh, channel. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, because this will be a YouTube and Patreon-only exclusive uh, giveaway. But 2K, thank you so much. It's 2K people following, good God. Listen to my ramblings. Just to the next 2K.